Post-apocalyptic building games certainly have a special place in this channel, and The Signal State is one of those games where after a, a massive apocalypse, which we'll find out exactly what happened here through the story, we're here to repair some farming equipment. I don't know if it's like along the lines of like Terminator or whatnot where the machines rebelled or if it was an EMP, but we're basically a farm repairman who's going to go out and repair all these uh, pieces of equipment on this farm to then try to feed the massive cities that we see in the background. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and again welcome to The Signal State, a game available now on Steam which you can get with the link down below in the description, and thanks to the developer of The Signal State for sponsoring today's video. We're going to jump in and take a look at this story and some of the puzzles in this game that has you doing a lot of uh, wiring and different types of uh, things related to electronics and robotics, which quite looks appealing. I, I love the, the look of the little, um, what I could only call like the debugging box there where we're plugging into all sorts of different equipment on the field and trying to repair it. So very cool. I like the art style and the uh, kind of the chill vibes from the music already. And it's one of those games where if you like puzzle games, this is certainly one that does it in a very unique way. Well, without further ado, thanks again, guys, for smashing like and hanging out. And thank you for subscribing as we take our first look at the Signal State. Let's go. Our machine stopped working years ago. Not just ours, everyone's. Our computers, our appliances, everything. No one knows why. Entire cities ground to a halt. I wasn't even born when it happened. All I can remember were the distant dark cities hidden in the smog. So, here we are. Building everything from scratch. Putting the pieces in the right places. My radio crackles to life. You should be nearly there. Do you see it? Uh, hold on. Yeah, I think I do. Oh, well, there we are, the farm. Beautiful. Wow. It's in quite a state. <gasps> Signal state? Oh, my God. Well, that's where you come in. That's a farm. Uh, that's That farm's your home now, and it needs some fixing. Uh, I guess I should settle down and get started. Yes. You're going to be alone for now, but hopefully not for long. Go forth. Rebuild. All right. Well, I'm already getting the vibe that this is definitely a post-apocalyptic game, not because we're trying to survive an apocalypse, but because the apocalypse already happened, everybody survived and now trying to just rebuild and continue rebuilding. Interesting. Uh, chat details leaderboard. Ooh. Miriam diagnostics test. Topic. Diagnostic test. This is a diagnostics test. To verify that the signal pipeline works, connect SRC1 directly to both output or out one and out two. Interesting. Save games, start. Okay, so these are like our missions, I assume. And there's other people we can uh, compete against, although uh, I guess I'm not connected on Steam. But okay, there's like world records and global and personal bests. Very nice. Okay, let's begin. Unless. Uh, start. This is your job. Rewire the circuits to repair the machine. Start with the signal, uh, the given source SRC signals. Transform them and send them out to the out sockets. Oh. Now the brief describes your objectives. For this circuit, you have to send out the SRC1 signal to both out1 and out2 signals. Use modules to transform signals. Connect them with cables. Click and drag sockets to create cables. White sockets are for inputs. Black sockets are for uh, outputs. Inputs can only be connected to outputs. Try it now. Connect SRC1 to the split input. Oh, damn. You need a big brain for this game. My brain is already feeling bigger. Ooh, I like the uh, nice little attention to detail to the wiring. Okay. A split takes one input signal and duplicates it to multiple output signals. Complete the circuit. Connect the split outputs to the out sockets. 
Oh, I see. So we're basically taking one times two and duplicating it to this, basically. Press play to begin the signal playback and verify your solution. Nice. All right, 18937. So there's your uh, other leaderboards and such. Oh yeah, everybody's in first place on this one. Okay, let's continue. Excellent, your system works perfectly. You're ready to begin. So what now? Start cataloging the machinery on site. Start with the simpler ones. Uh, all right, I'll do my best. Disconnect. Okay, so that was just testing. Now we got to start working on the power generator. So I guess we're doing what Miriam said and starting with the smaller pieces of equipment, the simple stuff, the things that will help the farm to begin, like uh, power generation, filtration, basic stuff for us to live here, and then eventually the large farm equipment to plant and harvest. I can see like wheat fields out there and stuff too, and a beautiful mountain. Very nice. The work begins. So, what's the end game here? Why are we repairing this farm? We've already had our current one and it's giving us enough food. Well, we have a surplus of food and more space for our community, for one, but I think we can do more than that. More? It's too early, I think, to talk about the... I think it's too early, I think, to talk about that at this juncture. Not everyone here agrees with me on that plan. Not yet, at least. Uh, not even a hint. I'm the one doing the work here. I deserve that, at least. Hmm, you're right. Look, for the past few years we haven't... We have been uh, subsisted just fine, but is that all we can do as a community? What are you talking about? I'm talking about rebirth, about rebuilding. It's not enough to survive. That's all I'll say for now. Right, okay. Right. I guess the first thing to work on would be the on-site power generator. Good plan. That looks like an Ellis Agritech generator. Should be easy enough to rewire. What's uh, Ellis Agritech? A corporation from the old world. Probably the biggest manufacturer of agricultural equipment. Rare is the farm without any Ellis Agritech machinery. Alright. Click to go to details. Send SRC1 to Out1, but with the signal intensity tripled. Okay. Start. Hmm. Uh, split takes one input and duplicates it to four outputs. Some takes. Oh, okay. So we're like we're dealing with actual uh, uh, actual terms. Uh, some takes it up to four inputs and uh, sums it up to one output. Use the split to duplicate the input, then use the sum to add the duplicates together. Okay. Well, they've already connected this for us, so we're basically just connecting multiple uh, splits to a sum and then to out. I guess we just gotta, we can only do this. There's only one output, right? You cannot connect input to another input. Oh, I have to use down here the output. Okay, makes sense. So out to in. And we want to triple this? Wait, cable length, 13. Wait, can we make unnecessarily long cables for whatever reason? Okay, well we need to triple it, so let's just try three and see what happens. I wonder what'll happen if we do things like that. Wow, we did it. <laughs> this game make me feel smart. Brain big. Good. Oh, I should always go to chat after a mission. Uh, let's see. Good job. I suspect you'll have a lot more Ellis equipment to deal with from uh, with on your farm. Is that a problem? No, not really. It's just Ellis Agritech is a name with historical baggage, shall we say. Care to explain? Mm, it's not my story to tell. Okay. What do you mean? You're the one who hinted at the information. Miriam, don't you, don't you do that, Miriam. All right, circuit breaker. Now we're starting to get into some lore. Getting the hang of it? Uh, 
I guess so. It's a bit of math, a bit of logic. That's right. That's all these systems are. A little bit of math, a little bit of logic. It's not magic. Uh, I'm just impressed with human beings ever managed to make stuff this sophisticated. Well, what do we really did was let a bunch of folks design this stuff for us. We didn't understand the machines, but we trusted them. We trusted their makers. And then? You know this part. The machines died, and without warning, we were left scrambling, trying to figure out what went wrong. And that's why we're in this state now? Yes. And that's why I revived our farm, and why you're reviving yours. So, uh, we know the machines as well as they know us. Right. I should get to it then. Click to go to Details tab. Uh, out 1 receives SRC1 signal increased by 5 volts. Out 2 receives SRC1 signal with its intensity halved. Okay. I suppose we'll get dirty when we're in the simulation. The module catalog shows what modules are available for this current circuit, or for this circuit. Read the descriptions to understand their behaviors. Click and drag on any module in the module catalog and add it to the rack. Add it now. Add an attenuator module to the rack. Okay. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so this is really neat. Now, one thing I didn't mention from before, too, is there's actually a puzzle making mode in this game and I think there's a challenge mode too with other types of um, you know uh, puzzles ready to go so I, I guess you could kind of make your own or, or challenge others or challenge yourself really to doing the best you know like you could play with friends or whatnot in order to make a puzzle and then see, see who can solve it and then all these pieces can be used to try to solve that puzzle too some of which aren't necessarily needed you know to, to be used in each scenario click and drag the existing modules to arrange them drag them away from the rack to delete them. Try it now to delete the sums module. Some modules have adjustable controls that affect their behavior. Adjust the bias amount until it reads 10 on the volts uh, by rotating the knob. Now we want plus 10. There we go. Uh, knobs can also be adjusted with the scroll wheel by or by typing into the numeric display. Oh, that's great. Try adjusting the value to five volts with the scroll wheel or typing. Scroll wheel's good. Uh, use these buttons to toggle between module catalog and the IO panel. Uh, the IO panel shows the given SRC signals and the expected out signals you need to match. Hover over them to see their precise values, analyze them, and you might notice patterns. Signals are always limited to a range of a negative 100 volts to 100 volts. Try solving this circuit on your own. Good luck. All right, cool. We can move this wherever we want, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so uh, out receives SRC1 signal increased by 5 volts. Out 1. Hmm. Okay, well, we need an out. And out to in, and then out to in. Oh, there's two of them. Uh, we might need more equipment. So we can go down here and get whatever else we need. We already have our bias, split, and uh, attenuator, so... Hmm. Kind of nice to have a little space between these so you can see. But you can always put them next to each other, too. Also nice that the uh, wires become transparent, so that way if they... <laughs> I could imagine a circuit being so complicated that sometimes you won't be able to see what's underneath without the wire being transparent. So that's helpful. Okay, let's see what happens if we just do it like this. So we're just going to need to do some adjusting. Okay. So let's bring it back up to 10. We're close. Actually, it looks like this... Wait, can we slow down the speed? Oh, okay. I thought it was going up from the in. That's kind of cool that we can see which way it's going. Okay. So anyway, let's get to it then. So a tip. Mouse over the waveform in the I.O. panel to see the given SRC and expected out signal values from each timestamp. Alright, so... Uh, 
It looks like it changes slightly by increasing. So let's try this. Oh. So it looks like it's okay in the first form, so wait. There we go. Okay, so SRC1 uh, increased by 5 volts, so we gotta reduce that, wouldn't we? Uh, controls the amount of bias input if there's no input outputs this value, okay. So into the split, then back out to the attenuator, then down, or sorry, the uh, bias, okay. Also, how exactly do I paint the wires? Probably when I click and drag it. Okay, let's see what else we can do then. We, let's see what happens if we get a hint. Uh, you should solve for one out and two out first. Oh, get help on Discord? Wow! That's really cool. You can actually read... If you get really stuck, you can just go to the Discord and ask for some help that way. And or the answer. That's cool. Okay, we'll solve this one ourselves. Kind of uh, enjoying just goofing around and putting things around where we need to. But in this case, we just need the... Uh, sums them together and outputs the sum. Okay, so what's our what's our output and what's the required values here? So it looks like it's constantly increasing. Just slightly though. So we'll need two outs, won't we? We have multiple ins, but we have two two outs. Wait, can we use this up here? We can. Interesting. So things can get very complicated. But we can only have one out, so it just seems like it needs to string together just once. But let's try multiples. There we go. Now, by doing everything unnecessarily incorrect, I can also learn where these could be useful later by just kind of trial and error on everything. And a lot of this is going to come down to how we just control the uh, input amounts. We can see here that we're producing zero. So we need the attenuator to be a little higher. So we can kind of reverse engineer the problem. All right. So then I assume that if this is uh, splitting a signal, this is adding. So a bias is actually adding whatever value is missing or could reduce it. So we're basically splitting and adding. So maybe this is by by five. Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right, so the attenuator is, is cutting the signal for two and the bias is increasing it by five for one. Okay, first try. Yeah, I'm getting it though. You know, this is a really interesting puzzle game for those who really like uh, for example, mathematics uh, and, and uh, spreadsheets and such, pretty good idea to, uh, to be able to like use you know uh, sum and whatnot in order to connect everything together. Pretty cool. Let's go back to chat. Excellent. The generator is now able to efficiently route power to whatever systems are needed of it. Time for the next step, which is time to bring the machines to life. Oh God, that didn't work out in Terminator. <laughs> Continue cataloging uh, what you have on site and what needs fixing. Some of them are simpler than others. All right. You can start by getting some of the lights in the farmhouse up and running. Is it complicated? No, it should be pretty simple. All right. Oh, cool. So now we're going to turn on some lights. Farmhouse lights. Oh, cool. You can see your solutions, too. So there's probably way more complicated or efficient ways to do things based on what you want to do. Time to get the farmhouse lights on. The lighting circuitry is not too complicated. Some voltage levels will have to be altered to prevent blowing the lights out. Well, that's good. It has some pretty creepy... It's pretty creepy here at night. Well, you're right to feel cautious. It's almost Halloween. I mean, uh, there might be strangers out in the wilds, and they might not have the best intentions. Uh, well, I better get to work. 
you like to go to the details tab. Out 1 is SRC1 and 2 sum together. Out 2 is SRC subtracted from SRC1. Hmm, okay. She says it's not complicated, so. Your system contains some functions meant for your convenience. You can change the speed of a signal playback, yes. Cables can be color-coded for organizational purposes. All right. It's really good for those of you who like building your own PCs, too. You can definitely have some cable management in the game. This literally is a cable management game. That's cool. Uh, Right-click on an existing color to update its color. Update uh, update cable with right-click. Okay, you can ask me for hints if you're ever stuck. Uh, the notepad for the oscilloscope uh, modules can be useful for debugging and experimenting. Oh, I like that. That's cool. That's really cool. Always remember to read your brief for your objectives. Good luck. Okay, so we have two outs and two ins. So out one is SRC one and two summed together. No way, it could it be that easy? SRC one is one and two summed together. No way. Wow, it is. That was easy. Okay, so out one is correct. That's Q. Uh, and then. Out 2 is SRC subtracted from SRC 1. Oh, I'll need the splitter then. Let's see. So let's split. Um, okay, this is going to get a little bit more complicated. There's probably better ways to organize this, but this will work in my, my brain. So we can do these two like that, and it should still be correct. Yep. Okay, so that's good. Out one is correct. And then out two. Out two is SRC uh, two from one. All right, so what are their... Wait, it should be zero? Wait, SRC two and one are both at five. Is that... Wait, let's use the... Uh... Uh, let's see, a four-channel scope that will display the last eight values of a given input signal used for debugging purposes only. So in other words, if I wanted to test how much power these are producing, do we get as well the uh, notepad you can write text on the module and use it as a notepad oh that's cool hello oh that's neat so we can actually have our notes up here too of what we're <laughs> we can like uh, mark certain areas so that way we can say like you know split one and two or whatever we can explain what's going on that's neat man a lot of care put into that all right so one should be correct again let me just make sure yep Okay, and so now two needs to be uh, one and two halved. So would it just be one of the two? Uh, you cannot connect an another input to another input. My mistake. Oh, I don't want to connect these two though. Wait, shouldn't this be an output? But I just want to take one of them. Oh, I was kind of right. Okay, I was going to say, if I got that right, I'd be surprised. Okay. So, it's got to be half to the first. So, we need to split, right? Well, actually, we could bring this into a whole other area to work on it. There we go. So, this will be receiving SRC1. Uh, let's see, out two is SRC two subtracted from one. Okay. I think that just means finding that value and then trying to find out how to reduce it with the attenuator. So actually we could just use this splitter here. Like this. And we could take both values and put it into a sum. So a split and a sum are kind of the opposite of each other. 
Also, I believe these are red because they... Actually, that, yeah, that wouldn't make sense, but okay. All right, let's take this. And now we should be able to adjust the intensity. Right now we have to have it at zero. It should be half of the two. No. Controls the amount of uh, attenuation or inversion, so we're at half. I think I just need to figure out what one of the second ones are, and we can adjust it here without doing too much work. Oh, actually, I should have set that back to zero. All right, I've been gooping around with this for a while, and I, I really think I've got the solution now. One thing I found out is I can move the uh, system's output, but okay, one thing I didn't realize is that the attenuator can actually be used to... <laughs> I was adding two together all the time through the sum, and I didn't need to do that. Um, all I gotta do is simply just turn one of these signals into a negative so that way we can then just get the numbers to what they need to be to then add them or subtract them together and then finally output it. I've also organized a few things too so to explain uh, basically the red wires are the input from SRC 1 and 2 to the splitters where then it goes to the uh, sum for the solution for the first puzzle so we basically have SRC 1 and 2 added together and then straight outputted once they're added at the sum and then we've got the uh, SRC 1 and 2 that are split here with the uh, green and white wires. The green wire is basically our addition, and the white wire is our sub uh, subtraction. We're, we're basically flipping the value then of SRC 2, as it says. SRC 2 sub subtracted from SRC 1. So uh, SRC 2 uh, to the attenuator to reverse it, so it takes whatever value that may be uh, and basically 180s it. So then if we connect these two together here, I'm going to color code that white. Now I want to make it abundantly clear too, I, um, to this day my math skills are very poor. My, my mind just doesn't work that way and I have to reverse engineer problems like that. And so this is like what I picture everybody or what I picture doing uh, in my mind when I actually do math problems is kind of some wiring like this. So it's really, this moment just clicked in my mind that it actually like flips everything around but it shows and it, it like designates a calculation via like instead of just doing it in your head it shows like this it's like a physical item this gets delivered here and then is either transported to it's like factorio or something like this it's crazy how cool that works i didn't realize it till now but this is a really good way to kind of like um you know, do some more advanced math rather than just one plus one or two divided by two you have to add all those together for a larger calculation so i think I think I've got it. So we don't need the bias at all. So we can remove that. But it is fun to experiment and to make mistakes. This will be the big moment of truth. I, I hope I have this. Like, it's just going to come down to this. If it flips the signal. Holy crap. Please, please. <laughs> I did it. Well, now that I know that, that's more basic knowledge for the next puzzle. First try. Thank you, ma'am. Cool, let's go to chat. Excellent. With the lights on, you should be able to get work done even at night. Am I expected to work nights as well? No, of course not. I leave that choice up to you. The sooner you get the equipment up and running, though, the sooner we can send people to help you run this place. All right. Some of these machines are going to need new modules added to your rewiring system. I'll get... Oh, Gordon. I'll let Gordon come deliver them when he... Uh, when the time comes. Who's Gordon. You met him briefly before heading out. I'll let him uh, introduce him himself later. Okay. Oh, very nice. All right, on to the next puzzle then. VCA test. Gordon. Freeman? wonder if he has a crowbar. Well, he certainly got the glasses. Hello, it's me, Gordon Lee. We met briefly before you departed headquarters. I issued you your module rewiring system. Oh, all right. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, I don't remember because I wasn't there, but sure, I remember. We'll just try to be kind. I sent a delivery drone over uh, did, to you with some new modules last night. Did you get it? Uh, yes, it woke me up. Thank you very much. Uh, I apologize. Just thought you might want the new modules fresh out of the workshop. Does the freshness make a difference? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, what are these new modules? These are the voltage-controlled amplifiers also known as VCAs. Are you familiar with them? Uh, no, not at all. Do you know how they work? Oh boy. 
wall of text. Sure, VCs control the intensity or amplitude of a signal with another signal. This other signal, the control voltage or CV, is treated as a percentage of the value from 0 to 100 and is multiplied with the input signal at 0%. The input signal is completely muted at 100%. The input signal is sent through the unchanged at the percentage between. The input signal has a reduced value. Basically, think of the VCA like a faucet that controls the water flow, except you control the flow of water with another water flow. Oh, I think I've got it. Let me uh, actually say I don't understand, though. That's fine. The easiest way to understand them is to dive right in an experiment. Hook them up here and there and observe their behavior. See what values they output. Don't worry, you won't break anything. And remember, if you're unsure, you can always ping us for some help. All right, I'll try. Go to the Details tab. Let's start the VCA test, which says that each timestamp out one receives a specified percentage of SRC1 signal. Oh, the percentage values specified by SRC2. So basically, we want to use the first signal, but the second signal is going to cause some interruptions. Uh, at each timestamp, out1 receives a specified percentage of SRC1 signal. The percentage of the value is specified by SRC2. <laughs> uh, I thought I was a genius in the last one. Oh, are we just literally just learning the VCA? Nothing else to learn? Okay. Uh, SRC1 in. This is the control value. Uh, so let's see, the percentage value is specified by SRC2. Okay, and then out. I guess it's just simple, uh, simple trial and error here. Let's see what happens. What the hell? That's crazy. Holy crap, you did it. Great job, you're a natural at this. Uh, thanks. Well, it doesn't feel that way. Ah, uh, you're just an imposter syndrome talking. Yeah, just heard from Gordon. Good work. Uh, you're well on your way to giving that farm, getting that farm back to its usual glory. Thanks. Disconnect. <sighs> and on to barn. Oh, barn lights again? Oh, uh, oh yeah, the farmhouse. We have lights in the house now. I was thinking that was actually the barn, but uh, yeah, we got to do the barn lights now so we can get that all working. More lights to jumpstart the barn lights are a bit more complicated. The, they have variable intensity controls for when the horses get grumpy, I guess. More complicated. Not to worry, the VCA should come in handy. Alright, I'll try. Go to the details tab. Oh, boy. Let's go take a look at this one now. Crazy the amount of uh, things that they have you do. Click on the timestamp in the I.O. panel to add a breakpoint. Try now. Breakpoint. Signal playback will pause at each breakpoint, allowing you to visually debug your signal flow. Clicking on the same timestamp will remove the breakpoint. How does this work? Oh, I see. So we get to work on things in sections. So like, for example, we might have half the puzzle correct, but the other half might be uh, giving us trouble. So it prevents us from having to change things we don't need to. <laughs> Very nice. All right, guys. That's cool. I like it. And we are out of time today for the signal state, but let me say that this is a delightful game that uh, is, is very frustrating to me at first, where it's like, oh man, what is the solution? But once I figure it out, it's nice to visualize re-analyzing uh, things and reverse engineering things to find out why things go from point A to B by looking at point B to A. But this game, we use the entire alphabet of all sorts of different uh, <laughs> inputs and outputs and modifications and inversions and adding and subtracting and dividing and percentages in order to save the day. Save the day with math. That's awesome, dude. Uh, this is definitely a learning game in disguise, though it's got a very cool atmosphere, very good music, and it, it feels nice to be able to do these puzzles. Keep in mind there's a whole puzzle workshop and a, a sandbox mode that are coming soon to the game, and you can check it out again with the links down below in the description. Thanks again to the devs of the Signal State for sponsoring today's video, and thank you guys for your kindness, patience, understanding, and encouragement in the comment section as always, and I greatly appreciate you. I hope you all have a great day, and I hope you check out the Signal State now on Steam. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good one.